Hi there! Uh, welcome to a very different type of video today. Uh, and it's a very different type of video because I watched Sanremo this year. So I can't really do a reaction review kind of video about the song Brividi because I've already heard it a million times by now. <laughs> and I really enjoy it. So instead, I was thinking I'll just talk about it. Uh, what happens in the song, just go through it. What is the, maybe what were the songwriters thinking about when they wrote it? What happens throughout the song? What do I like about it? What do I dislike about it? Maybe this could be interesting. Maybe it could be completely uninteresting. We'll find out, I guess. But uh, I've always wanted to try something like this. So now's the time. And as you know, I, I'm sure everyone has already heard it. That's watching the video. This song is very heavily based on the piano. Now here's an issue because I'm not a very good pianist and I don't own a piano. I do own a keyboard, so I'm going to use this to kind of get the idea across of what they're doing in the song. But it's not going to sound really as good as it does in the actual song. But this song is in the key of G major, so there's uh, these notes, right? Uh, and G major, that's the G major chord right there. Uh, this song relies a lot around the G major chord, and then it goes down to a C major. But what this song does that's a little bit out of the ordinary that I really enjoy, is that it colors these chords into a G major 7 and a C major 7. Now what this means is that you add... Uh, the G major scale has 8 notes uh, up to the octave, so between these two notes there are 8 notes. Uh, and when you play the G major chord you have the 1st, the 3rd, and the 5th note. But what they do here is they add the 7th as well. And that adds some color to the chord, and it adds some kind of extra... I don't know, it just fleshes it out, I think. It sounds better uh, in certain types of music, not in all types of songs. But in this type of song, I really do think it adds something special. So the first chord is a G major 7, which sounds like this. And then the second chord is a C major 7 which is also a bit fleshed out. Instead of just playing G major, C major, you have this kind of extra character in the chords, which I really like. And now this opening part of the song as well, this intro, uh, it has like a combination, it collaborates a piano and a guitar, in the studio cut at least. There's like, you know, it's different when you listen to the song that's live performed because there's this massive orchestra in San Remo, that just makes everything sound more expansive and maybe a bit more authentic. But in the studio cut, basically what it is, is that you have the chords, and then there's this... And what I think, like, it's a bit difficult to really find out what the actual sound is, because it's just drowned in reverb and delay. But I think it's a guitar, so what it would be something like... Uh, is that you have the chords and then maybe a... something along those lines. Uh, it also sounds those like there's like a strumming sound to the to the guitar. So it's probably just played several notes, adding harmonies on top of each other. So as the verse starts, the chords kind of change here because they start playing more rhythmically. It's not just the holding out and holding out. It becomes more rhythmically, it's literally something like... I don't know, something like those lines. It's, it hits on every fourth uh, instead. So the melody is quite straightforward, but I really like how it descends. So we start with the... Uh, I'm, I don't know the lyrics, so I'm not gonna try and sing along to it, but it goes... Yeah, and then I really like that kind of descending. It's like laddering down. Each note, every note is just one note down. And then you jump up to the starting point again. It's kind of nice. I, I like the just the flow of that line. Uh, and this part of the song is repeated twice, I believe, uh, before there's like this arpeggio moment that comes in in the melody, which is just really, really nice. This is one of my, my little... Favorite. Uh, what could be? Right? 
so this part, it's basically just the same kind of concept as the previous part, where it's like this laddering down movement. But it, it's made in an arpeggio instead. It's like a staccato movement because uh, the, the notes are so short and they just jump between each other. So there's like... It's like a really nice rhythm. It just gets stuck in my head instantly. Um, so I really like how it changes up there. Now the chords also move around a little bit. It's not just the same two chords repeated. Uh, we start with the G major 7, of course, and then the C major 7. And then when we're still in the verse, we get back to the G major 7. Then there comes an A minor. But what they do here is they add uh, a different bass note, which is the D, and then G. So they kind of move up. Uh, this is a really nice just transitional phase. Uh, this happens before this arpeggio movement, so I kind of just jump around in the song now. I hope you're with me where, where I am. Uh, but these two chords, the A minor with the D in the bass and then G in the bass, it adds like a, a movement up towards this segment with the arpeggio chords, because those two chords are the transitional chords into this part. Alright, so now during this arpeggio part here, that, that whole thing, the chords swap up a little bit, which is uh, nice because we've moved, you know, this A minor with the bass notes moving, they've moved into a C major chord, which then goes into a B minor chord and an E minor chord, and then back to the C. All right? Uh, I don't really know which inversion of the C chord they do here, so let's just ignore that. <laughs> I haven't been reading into it way too much. But basically this chord change here is kind of nice because it adds a little more drama, I think. These chords sound a bit more... like you have the C, which is really hopeful, in combination with this. Uh, but then you have the B minor, which is, you know, it's a minor chord. It sounds a bit more dramatic, which then leads into the E minor, which is even more, you know, just kind of... We're being dragged into something more vulnerable, I feel like, here, before going back to the C again. Um, so this segment offers a little bit of a different character to the previous one, I think, because we've only had really major chords leading into this segment. Uh, but here, the tone shifts a little bit. You get the first impression that this is like kind of a, a sweet melody. But then you have the... Um, and then you kind of just get like the mood drops a little bit. But what happens right before the chorus is actually one of my favorite things that songs usually do when I really like the songs. I, I can get so dragged into a song just because of this little detail. So what it does is that, as you uh, maybe remember, the, the uh, build-up part that we're on right now, or the bridge or whatever, it ends on C. But what it does on its final round before leading into the chorus is that it does this. That's a C major to a C minor chord progression. Which is basically you just lower the third note of the chord to a, to a minor note instead. And this is like a trick, or not a trick, but it's a chord progression that certain songwriters use when they want to transition into a different segment. Which is always found you really effective to me. I always just fall for these. Some songs that you might recognize that this comes from would be like Fire More is is my go-to example at this point because it's just so so iconic when it does it. There's like a, um, right, and then there's also a, a monster like me. Right, it's that that little transitional chord. It's so nice. I always love it. And this song does it too. Of course it had to, you know, it just wants me to fall for it. <laughs> okay, so then the chorus actually hits, and the chorus actually starts on C major, which is kind of unexpected. So we go from C major to C minor, and then back to C major, which is kind of unexpected to me because I would have expected it to go back to G major, uh, where we started, but it doesn't. So uh, the chorus goes in the chords of C, G, and then D with an F sharp in the bass, so it sounds like this. Okay, 
So this is kind of a very standard chord progression, but I like how it descends downwards, and especially with the third chord, that it's a D, but with the F sharp in the bass, that goes so closely from the G to the F sharp, goes downwards there, and then back up to C. Um, just kind of a nice little chord progression. It's very simple, but it, it, it's effective. The melody is, of course, what's in focus here, and the melody would be something like... Right, okay, yeah. Uh, ooh, that's, a, that's actually a really nice one. Okay, uh, so what happens here is that it jumps uh, a perfect fifth from uh, D to A. This is a very high, like a large, you call it a large interval. It's very, yeah, you know, it's kind of impressive that they jump so high, uh, so like rapidly. Uh, it's even, you know, D to B. This is a, uh, what is it even? It's a major sixth. So that's a big, big jump. Okay, so the melody is... Uh, this is also really nice that it uh, lands on the F sharp, because the F sharp isn't really the expected note here. I would say that G would, would have been expected. The F sharp sounds more broken to land on, because it's not like... It's basically the seventh note of the G major chord, as we talked before. So it sounds more broken to land here than to land on G. Okay, so I really think the chorus is super broken and sounds really vulnerable and emotional and sad. Uh, so I'm always a sucker for that, so, so I like it. Uh, what's mostly special about it is, of course, that there's two vocalists now. And what happens when you have two vocalists is that it basically works like if you have two instruments doing the same solo, but they take turns. That's what the singers do in this one. They start by harmonizing with each other, and then they take each other's segments, they take like a segment each in the chorus. So this is what happens when uh, they start singing each other's parts uh, later on. There's like the... Right? So there's a variation in the melody here, and I like how this variation in the melody is sung solo, you know, because the main melody is sung uh, together, but then when the when the part like the B section of the chorus comes in with this different melody, it's sung by only one of them. It's a nice little detail, and it just adds something more personal to each side of the story of the vocalists. I think so. Actually, verse two and chorus two of this song is basically just the same thing as the first time around. Um, they add like a little bit of drums and they add some strings to make it sound a bit grander. I think the drums are kind of stale, not a big fan of those, but I get what they're doing. They just want to add some kind of life into the song because now everything has already been introduced. We need to build somewhere. So I get all the ideas they have there. I just don't think there's anything interesting to talk about there. Where there is something interesting to talk about though is the breakdown after the second chorus because this part it's kind of reminiscent of the bridge in the first verse. This arpeggio kind of melody here as well, but it's way more raw and kind of aggressive, which adds so much personality in the two different vocalists. It's a really nice detail. Uh, and it's nice how they use the same chords here again to kind of really showcase the different um, characters or personalities that, that perform these lyrics. So this part doesn't really have like arpeggio as much, but it's like this staccato uh, still rhythm, but it's more repeated notes, so the, it would be... Right? Um, and it's the same chords behind it, but since... I mean, it's the same kind of rhythm that's in before, so I, I shouldn't have said that it's an arpeggio again, because it's not, but it's the same kind of um, approach they take here as well. So also, of course, what happens in this part is that uh, they start collaborate singing again uh, because there is this melody, yeah, that that one, and then Mahmoud comes in with a contrastive one to kind of there's like a call response thing and there's a turn taking in the vocals which leads into the final segment. So that's another nice detail. I just forgot about that completely when I <laughs> when I was in the middle of my talking. Still, the final chorus of the song. Uh, it goes completely bare-bones piano here again, uh, which I really like. I like this way of ending the song. But then, where I kind of... Like, it sounds really vulnerable in this part, but where I kind of lose a little bit of my attachment to the song is that they start building again. 
they add this kind of regular course that they had the second time around. They just copy paste it in the third time to kind of just make like a grand finale, I guess. But I just don't think this song needs it. And that's because of one very particular reason. Because they've done something so clever with the songwriting in this one that I love. But it doesn't really come across like the full function of it. It doesn't come across because they made it this kind of expansive ending. Because what they do is that they actually end this entire song on the C minor chord. So the final time around, it, start, it ends here. That's where it ends. Because what, what the thing here is, you want the song to go back to the G major. Because that's where you started. This is the starting point. You want to return back to where things started. But what they do here is they end it on this kind of broken note. It's like a, a musical metaphor of sorts that things didn't work out. Because if things would have worked out, you would have gone from the C to the C minor, back to the G. You would have landed here again, where you started. But the thing is that this song doesn't do that. It ends on the C minor, which is just this completely broken and out of place chord in this kind of, uh, in this key. Ending it on the C minor really just makes that whole feeling of, you just feel like, wow, this is where we ended. This wasn't where it was supposed to go, but here we are. And that way of just musically storytelling, I love that. I really, really do. But I just don't think that it comes across as greatly because there's so much more, there's so much more music going on in the ending now that they've made it more grand. Another thing is that the melody also ends on F sharp, which isn't really where you want it to end. You want it to end on G, here. But it also ends, you have the... That's where you end. You don't go back here. You don't, you don't. <laughs> it just ends on there. And that's another just great detail. I just wish they would have really highlighted this ending. How it ends on that. There's nothing after that. It's like they've done it so well songwriting wise, but then just the arrangement has kind of missed the boat with me. Maybe other people just love the way it ends. But I think that like this more scaled back version of just having the piano uh, really in focus with the vocals being that vulnerable together and ending it on these broken on this broken chord. That would have been such like a, a gut punch, I really think. Uh, a way of an ending a song that would really just kind of make my heart sing. Regardless, there's this little thing about the studio cut that I should probably just mention because the studio cut is very heavily reliant on vocal processing. Um, and I get it that it's like a stylistic choice. It's very like modern and accepted and it's, it just adds to the contemporary sound. But when I just listen to these chords, it just kind of becomes a mismatch to me because this sounds so authentic that hearing these processed vocals just doesn't add up. Luckily, when they perform it live, you don't get to hear that. So for me, that's a bonus. Uh, but other people could absolutely love the vocal processing on this song. I just really don't. I think it's unnecessary and it kind of takes away some of the raw emotion that they want to transmit or that I think they want to transmit. So that's like my little nitpick. Uh, of course, I also have a... a a grudge with the ending, like the instrumentation-wise ending. Uh, and I also have a little bit of a grudge that I guess the second half of the song just repeats the first half. Like the second verse and second chorus doesn't really break any boundaries. But it's fine. I understand it. Still though, I think there are just so many great aspects of the song that I really enjoy. And I think the main thing of it all is just that collaboration in this duet because giving each other the spotlight to transmit different parts of the song, it just really is effective. Duets usually have a tendency of just kind of working because they have that emotional impact when two people are singing contents with different characteristics and different personalities. As I said before, it's like when you have a solo section of a song instrumental wise and two different instruments play like different segments of the solo. It's like the same thing, it has that same impact. If you, hear, if you hear a rock song, you could have two guitarists playing each a solo with different characteristics in them. It works the same thing with vocalists, but even clearer because they have different voices, you know. 
it's a nice combination. It's a really nice way to transition back into a chorus. Uh, and I think, actually, yeah, just transitions in general in this song are really, really nice. That's a big plus as well. So a lot of great things to take from this one. I'm not going to give it like a rating because I don't believe in that kind of stuff. I'll just say that I enjoy so many things about that or about this song. And uh, even though it has some shortcomings in my book, I just really still like it a lot. So uh, hopefully this was interesting to some people, just going through the song, seeing what happens in it. And if it wasn't, I'm sorry, but it is what it is. Uh, do tell me what you think of the song uh, in the comments. If you still stuck around, then kudos to you, because I don't know why you would watch this much content of just talking about a song. But if you did, thank you. Do leave a comment with what you think about the song. Um, and hopefully I will see you in another video soon. So take care of yourselves until then.